was extremely different different um, experience to 2018, obviously. But um, you know what? In a lot of ways, it was it was just as nice, if not nicer, because we got to celebrate it together in kind of a more remote remote way, and you got to meet the people that really really matter to you. You know, so um, it was it was very different, but very nice. I guess they're both kind of two special All Ireland, and that the first ended like a, a long drought, and the second one is happening in the middle of a pandemic. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, I suppose 2018 was relief, as well as obviously huge, um, huge satisfaction that we got over the line eventually after such a long, after such a long time. But um, I suppose this year, straight up, I was talking to a few of my close friends before, kind of around summertime when. Nobody knew what was going on, whether the championship would go ahead or not. And I, I actually wasn't sure that I even wanted to go ahead because you were, I was after getting into such a kind of a rush of not really training and kind of, you know, just relaxing. And I was playing a lot of PlayStation, playing a lot of Call of Duty with a few of my friends over the summer. And I was thinking, God, you know, if we have to go back now and do a little preseason in October and then you're playing matches in freezing cold weather in November and December, I was thinking, ah, behind closed doors as well with no fans. I was thinking, geez, I don't know, do I want that at all? But... Obviously, when we got back training, then after a week or two, you actually realise why you got into such a road over the pandemic was because the one, the, the, your main purpose in life, which is GA and trying to get the best out of yourself and all your close friends, all your real close friends that you spend five nights a week with, you don't see, you didn't see them for so long. And I suppose when we got back then after a couple of weeks, so you just got back into the zone and it was obviously, it turned out to be a brilliant year. But to be honest, just the thing I enjoyed most from the year was just being able to go training because we were obviously living in the pandemic and you weren't nobody was allowed to go anywhere or do anything but obviously there was um exceptions for intercounty training and just to be able to go train on a Tuesday night and a Friday night and go to the gym on a Monday with a couple of your friends was just such a privilege and um it definitely it definitely helped me hugely to get to get through those couple of couple of months you know I saw, I saw you talking after the Allerna final about um the, the great send-off you got from the club on the, on the morning of the game you got kind of quite emotional when you were talking about that. Was, was there a reason for that? I did because I, did, and I was leaving early. I was leaving my house early. I can't remember what time we were meeting. I think we were meeting in the train session around 10 o'clock. So I was leaving my house. I'm literally five minutes from the train session. And for some reason, I was like, my, everyone was up in my house. So I have three brothers. Uh, I have three sisters and a brother. And obviously my mother and father and, and they all got they were all up early in the morning and there was no need for them to be up so early on a Sunday morning. And I was thinking, what are they doing up? But it never really crossed my mind. And I was going out to the car, my mother was dropping me in. And I took him out of my drive and turned right. And next thing the whole road was filled. And I suppose you're kinda you don't want to get you don't want to start thinking I didn't want to start thinking about the match a quarter to ten because it was still it was still five and a half hours away, you know, you don't want to start burning nervous energy five and a half hours before the match. So I kinda I didn't really, I didn't really process what was going on. I kind of just uh, rolled down the window and put a few thumbs up and said thanks very much, you know. And I sent a text into the lads in the in the club group saying thanks very much for organising that. That was class. But then I kind of just parked it, and I kind of not forgot about it. But then after the match, I was asked, I was asked uh, about it again, and then it all kind of the whole thing kind of came back and hit me about what it, you know. I suppose if we'd lost, I would never, I would never have thought about how cool a moment it was but because of how well the day went on both a personal and a team level it kind of all hit me there and then about how what a special what a special few hours in in your life that you can look back on forevermore you know so it was a, it was an unbelievable thing that i'll never forget well, one more for me for a moment it was when you finally got back uh, to the family after the all Ireland final uh, with them like not having been able to attend what, what was that like for you pretty special moment <laughs> yeah of course it was. I was lucky enough in 2018 that I got my mother and father and my uh, youngest sister and my brother out into the field and we got a nice photo with Delia McCarthy, which was which was class. My two older sisters were disgusted because they were they were above in the upper in the upper Hogan. They couldn't get down. So they were disgusted that they never got that photo. But I suppose when I got back, um, when I got back home, sure. My mother and father were on cloud nine. They were reading newspapers for about three days after the match you know, and they were collecting every sort of bit of memorabilia they could from the match. So. It was unreal. Look, like, there's no point. It was it was a uh, absolutely special special um, couple of days after the game, you know. And as I said, getting to spend it with the people that really matter to you, both your teammates and your family, and being able to actually engage with them um, was was very very different to 2018. But it was very nice. To be honest, straight up, we ha I actually genuinely haven't thought about uh, the year coming ahead at all because I was very cognizant of the fact that it's such a quick turnaround between December the 13th and the championship going to be starting whenever it is. I know the draw has been made, but I honestly haven't even looked at it because I really made uh, I really made it my business to take a break from everything. So 
like we haven't done it we haven't really met up we haven't met up at all as obviously after the few days you meet up and you enjoy it but after that there hasn't been really any contact from uh, from the group and um we're, i suppose we're not going back training for another couple of weeks because they're giving us a break because obviously we only finished up there a couple of weeks ago but I haven't, I know, not, not to be avoiding your question, but I honestly haven't thought about the year coming ahead at all because I've really made it my business to take both phys- physically and mentally just completely park it for a couple of weeks. Because when we do go back, it's going to be a couple of weeks for the league of hard training, and then the league's going to happen, and it's going to be a real quick turnaround for the championship. So you're going to be, you're going to need to be physically and mentally fresh. So I'm really made it my business in January to just completely park it. So we're back to school as well. I'm a school teacher, and we're back since Monday. So that's nice to get back into a routine of having work to do during the week and. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I will. It will be, it will be my main priority when it comes back around in a couple of weeks. But at the moment, I'm not. I'm completely taking a break from it all. Okay, this is terrible. I'm going to ask you now about the year ahead, even though you're saying you're not going to be <laughs> thinking about it. Um, um, we obviously, obviously, the collective training has been pushed forward. Um, do you have any concerns yourself that you know some talk maybe about the leagues? Could that go ahead? Would you have concerns that it might not be the right time? Or what's your own feeling on that? Especially as you say that you're a teacher. Yeah. Uh, well, look, there's people people in higher positions than me that are employed to look after these things. And I thought, in fairness to them, to run the championship off over over the last couple of months of 2020, and they did a, an absolutely brilliant job of it, you know, in terms of the world that we were living in at the time. Um, it was a super job out of them. So I'd be hopeful enough that, look, to be honest, I don't spend I don't spend too much time looking at case numbers or anything like that. I don't watch the news in the evening because there's just so much negativity in the world at the moment. And I hate it. It would get me down if I watched it. So I just try and avoid it all. And whatever happens will happen, you know, I just um, looking after myself in terms of making sure that you're abiding by the guidelines. But hopefully in a couple of weeks, things will calm down because I know it is crazy at the moment. But I suppose I think the league is at the end of February that it's supposed to be starting. That's still, what, that's nearly six weeks away, you know. So hopefully by then things will be somewhat back to normal and that we will we will be able to have a league because the league is the league is a brilliant, brilliant um a brilliant competition in its own self, you know. Once upon a time, it was kind of a pre-season for the championship, but not anymore. You know, we we really take the league quite seriously, so I I would hope that it will go ahead like like as normal. And just finally, for me, um, you mentioned there about like you know you, you sticking by the rules and all the rest. We've had examples over the last few weeks where other county intercounty teams have been seen to do a bit of collective training. Is that a bit dispiriting to other GA players who who are abiding by the rules? Um. <clears throat> Well, like I suppose technically it is because you're supposed to be abiding by the government guidelines. But I suppose there was a there was a rule, as far as I know, brought in a couple of years ago that intercounty teams weren't supposed to weren't supposed to go back training until January. But I don't know, is it enforced? Is it even a thing? I don't know because I don't know of any team that has has ever gone back in January. You know, in a normal season, obviously we haven't gone back yet, but that's a completely different point. But um, look, that's not for me to comment on. I don't know. I don't know what other what other teams are doing. All I know is. Thankfully, we had a long season and we got to the end of December and we've been given a nice few, few weeks break. So, I suppose that's we haven't had any contact from the from the management and we've just like taken a break ourselves. And I, I can't wait to get back, in all honesty. I can't wait to get back training because, again, obviously we're back in a lockdown now again and you're restricted with your movements and you can't go anywhere. You can't meet other people from other households. So, I'm looking forward to going back, but I really am forcing myself to take a break from it all because I know it will be needed because it is going to be a really, it's going to be a short season and you're, there's no point needing a break in March and April being sick of training, you know, because that's when you need to be, that's when you need to be really in the zone and hungry. So now is the time to take a break from it all. Carrot, it's it's been a, quite a quite a season for yourself on a, on a personal level. Um, I, I can remember back to to John Kiley speaking to us before the All Ireland Under Twenty One final. Um, in the Green Hills Hotel, and I think you were there yourself. And uh, you know, he, he had explained how you'd come such a long way from from leaving the footballers to, to securing that place in the under twenty one team. But but it's been a huge couple of years for you since. And I mean, it must have been an awful lot of work on your own, is it? Or you know, is it all down to the uh, collective training with Limerick? Um. <clears throat> No, to be fair, I wouldn't have got where I am where I am today without the people that without the people that I'm exposed to. Thankfully, like the, as I said, I've mentioned it before and I've mentioned it several times. And I'm sure I'll mention it again. Like the management team that John has put in place, um, it's just it's just incredible. And to be honest, this year on a personal level, like I'd be a quite reflective person. I'd always after a match, now I'd always reflect on the match. I'd watch back watch back the match and maybe watch back my clips, my own clips as well, and reflect on what I've done well and what I need to work on. But. Um, <clears throat> I suppose I, I'm lucky that there is like the likes of Car- I would have I would have definitely this year I'd say reflecting on the year I would have I would have 
ask for a lot more help than I would have before in terms of going to Caroline or psych- or sports psychologist, going to Paul Knark looking for um, maybe in the lead up to a game, I might ask him a couple of questions in terms of how the opposition is going to set up and how they're going to defend us and what's the best way to, you know, I'd ask him a couple of things like that. I'd go to Mikey maybe on, on a Monday in the gym and ask him a couple of things, you know. So I think this year I, I, I really went out of my way to ask more questions because I'm actually thinking about it. I always say to my students inside Desmond College in Newcastle West that they need to see the other students in the classroom as resources. If you're stuck on something, just ask the person beside you. Do they know how to do it? So I, I then I was asking myself, I was internally reflecting, am I asking enough questions of the people um, that is in our group? Because like, fortunately, we have some absolutely fantastic people in their in their own um in their own kind of departments that are absolutely top of their class at their at their own thing. And I was probably wasn't asking them the questions that I should have been asking. And also, thankfully that I am, I, I, I am part of a, I am part of a team that is, that is, um, that is, that is really, really good at, at them kind of things, you know? Was there a lot of, um, you know, did you try ball work, uh, the ball walls or, you know, was it up in, the field in Ray Bogue on your own or, you know, where do you, where have you spent most of the time away from the gym and away from the Limerick setup? Being honest with you, Jerome, I actually, this year, I, I actually stopped doing all that extra work. I, I think maybe in past years, I was probably doing a small bit too much and maybe burning myself yeah. out and, I wasn't, and I, wasn't, I wasn't super fresh then coming into games. Whereas this year, um, through talking to Caroline and through talking to Mikey, like even in the gym, I'd always do an extra set if we were given three sets, I'd do four sets. And, you know, it sounds great, but like Mikey Kiley is a is a super strength and conditioning coach. And if he thinks three sets is enough, three sets is enough. Why should I be doing a fourth one when I don't know anything about it? You know, so actually, it's actually the reverse of what you were saying. I have done, obviously, over the last number of years, I've done an incredible amount of work to get to get to where I am today. Because any any person on the intercounty team around the country is going to have to put in a serious amount of work to get there in the first place. But when you actually get there, then I suppose... They they know what they're doing. So if you give everything in training for Paul on a Tuesday and Friday night, and you stick to Mikey's plan on the Monday and in the gym, and then you go out on a Sunday and you take into account what Carolyn is maybe talking to during the week and what Paul a couple of tips Paul might give you and the other lads might give you, that's enough, you know. So I actually kind of st- stood back a small bit this year and stopped doing a ridiculous amount of work and just doing what's set out for you, you know, because that is enough. That is enough, and then you're then you're fresh going into a game. Uh, Jack from Sporting Limerick here. Um, you spoke before about the football, but how important was it just getting that exposure to Inter County with Limerick footballers? Absolutely, yeah. I think I said it there a couple of weeks ago in a different interview that I wouldn't be where I am today without the footballers, and that's and that's not something that I'm that, that's something that I'm extremely um, extremely proud of. I suppose I was lucky. The backstory to it was John or John Bruder, who was the owner of the Fit 100 gym that we work in, and he was Limerick senior ma- football manager for a couple of years, trained our club team, I think it was 2013 approximately, and then he got the Limerick job in 2014, and he asked me to come in, and I, I went in because I was kind of, to be honest, it was actually 2014, I didn't really hurt at all. Uh, I remember Kieran Carey was the under-21 manager at the time, and it's something I regret, but I just wasn't in the right place, and Kieran was asking me to come into the under-21 panel and give it a go, but... I just was, I just wasn't there with Harland. I, I had two years with minors, and I, I never really got near the team. And then, then I got a break with the footballers, and I was really enjoying my club football. And I got asked into the football uh, setup with Limerick, and I, you know, they were, they were really interested in me, and I got in there. And then I suppose it exposed me to top level training because every single team around the country, whether it's hurling or football, whether they're successful or not, they, every single one of them train hard, and that's a fact, you know. So I got in, and we were. We were g- gymming twice a week and then we were training three times a week and on the field and you were doing some really, really good strength and condition work. And it exposed me to, uh, it kind of showed me like there were some really top um, players in the dressing room at the time. I had one year with John Galvin and like Stephen Kelly, Stephen Lucy, they were also there with my first year of the football player. So it showed me the work they put in to, to get to where they were, you know, and Without that, without that year or two with the footballers, there, without a doubt, I wouldn't have been where I am today. Without it, absolutely no doubt about it. And obviously, this morning we got the news that the Fitzgibbon Cup won't go ahead this year. As someone that won the competition, how key was that in your development? I didn't actually know that. Um, that's that's a pity. That's a big pity. Because um, I was actually thinking about my brothers in first year of college at the moment with UL, and even for himself, he he did, he did crucial last year with the minors. He got a bit unlucky. He did it the week for the Munster final and. 
the college hurling is a really great um it's a really great platform to show to show everybody else and to show county managers whether it's minor under 20 or whether it's under 21 or senior what you're at and how good you are so it is that's a, that's a huge pity i didn't realize that that, that fits given and obviously sigerson so is shelved as well i'm assuming is it yeah that's a, that's a pity now for college college players because they're i look back so fondly on my both Fitzgibbon and Sigerson. Unfortunately, we weren't, we didn't win anything with the Sigerson with, with uh, in football in UL. But I wouldn't always class being successful as winning a trophy. I think we were extremely successful with that Sigerson side led by Brian Carson. We got to two semi-finals and very unlucky not to beat UCD and one of them actually missed the one-on-one goal chance at the last minute to beat them in the Sigerson semi-final. But that was they were a couple of great years um, in college, and I loved, I absolutely love college football and college hurling. And obviously, that Fitzgibbon medal that I do have. It was my last year. I was in. It was my sixth year of college. I was doing a master's, so it was my sixth year. Was the last year. Was the year that I won the Fitzgibbon, and that is a medal that I will absolutely always hold, hold dearly. And that was a super year, and that was a really, really good team. That Fitzgibbon team. If you look, if you look back, that Fitzgibbon team. There's a lot of good, a lot of players that went on to, went on to win an All Ireland medal after that. Yeah, and last one for me, um, uh, Rod. Um, you've obviously won All Ireland with the their own Robin system in 2018, and obviously it was straight knockout this year. Well, 2020. Which would you prefer going forward? I know it's probably yeah, that's a good question. That's, no, that's a good question. That's a really good question. I, uh, I, I don't know. I never really thought about it. To be honest, 2018 was absolutely special. Like there were some unbelievable games in 2018 in that round robin system, um, and obviously there were some great games this year as well. But I, I think if you put me to the pin of my collar, I think I'd prefer the round robin system. I think it's I think it's brilliant to play everybody. Everybody plays everybody, and then may the best man win after that. You know, the top three, top two play in the monster final. Third goes out into the into the uh, I think it's one round of qualifiers. I can't even remember back, but I think every let everybody play everybody and let the best man win. There's no there's no argument then after that. Any you know top people talking about easy draws things like that. Let everybody play everybody and let the let the best man win after that. And it's brilliant for spectators as well. What do spectators want? What would you want to see? You want more hurling. You know what do players want? They want more matches. You know, so I think that hopefully in time, I'm not sure, is it, uh, again, honestly, uh, is it, what's the 2021 situation? Is it, is it knockout or is it round robin? It's knockout. Um, knockout. Knockout, is it? Okay, so like, yeah. hopefully, hopefully we will get back to, I, I, I'm assuming that they will want to get back to the round robin in time because it's, it's obviously <clears> good for the GA in a, in a monetary sense and it's good for the players, it's good for the spectators, it's good for everybody. I think everybody loved it, so. Was it good to have Caroline Currid back this year? In the fold on the team, it was absolutely yeah. We we have um, we have great time for Caroline. But to, in fairness, Tony O'Gregan did a good job as well last year as our sports psychologist. And um, <clears throat> but Caroline, I suppose we've we've built such a trust and loyalty with Caroline uh, over the couple of years before, obviously 2018 and 2017, 2018. But um, I suppose that's a sports psychologist's job, isn't it, to build that trust and loyalty? And we've had some we've we've had some real great chats with Caroline, both on a personal level and as team level and with management. You know, so. Caroline, we we all love Caroline. You know, she's an absolute. Mm-hmm. She's an integral part of our integral part of our team. And um, long may it last. Yeah, because every team she's with seems to win things. <laughs> yeah, because she, she has teams, every and, Gaelic yeah. football and rugby and hurling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So every team, every team she's been with has has won in All Ireland. I think that's an unbelievable achievement to have on your CV. You know, so. Um, yeah. Obviously, what she does is is a is a winning formula, you know, and we're just absolutely blessed to have her, and I, I'm blessed to have her both on a personal level and a team level because I think people don't realise the realise the time that she that she actually spends in terms of ringing us. She she she, she was always there for us over the lockdown. I, I rang her a couple of times myself um, over the lockdown because we were actually given a break at one stage. We were given a. I think it was seven weeks off. I can't even remember what time it was because every time just didn't exist over the lockdown because. But we were given a break anyway for seven weeks. And after a few days, I was thinking we were after doing a really, really hard block of training, both gym work and uh, running. And um, we were given a few days off anyway. And after two or three days, it was in my mind that little voice in your head was saying, Do you know, why are you taking a break? Other fellas will be doing a bit. And I, I just said, I have to ring Caroline here now and just a- ask her this question. Mm-hmm. And she was like, what are you talking about? She goes, you were given a break. Take the break. Take Don't break. be stupid. Yeah. You know, and it's just even though I knew she was going to tell me that, I still had to ring her and yeah. hear those words. And then after that, I just settled down. And she was like, "You need to take the break because when we do go back after seven weeks, he goes, you need to be mentally and physically fresh, and you need to be hungry for the training. And if you are constantly thinking about training and even doing a few bits and pieces over these next few weeks, well, then you won't be fresh. So obviously, that was probably one of the most important phone calls I made all summer, ringing her because 
obviously I, I was really, really hungry for training then after we came back after those after those couple of weeks of rest and recovery, you know. So she's a special person and um mm. we're just I'm just delighted that she is working with us. Garud, from from the outside, this the Flemish team, you look like you're um not just like kind of teammates, it's like a real group of friends as well. And like a lot of you have played played together for so many years through underage teams. Like how much of a factor is that on the pitch that maybe you go the extra yard for your friend that you would for someone who was just a teammate? Absolutely huge. Yeah, without a doubt. I couldn't agree more with what you just said. I think you could see it after the after the final there and after the semi final. Like that's not that's not put on for show, like all the celebrations and people getting around to each other and really, really enjoying each other's company. Like we actually stayed in the dressing room for about an hour and a half after the game in the All Ireland because we were just we were just really enjoying, you know, they they're just special moments when unfortunately we weren't able to bring the cup into the dressing room, but they're just really special moments when you achieve what you set out at the start of the year and you go through you know, like I don't know to some of you know Racky like but it's just such a bleak place and it, it's always raining out there it's always freezing cold out there it's never sunny and like that's where you do all your pre-season you move into the Gaelic Crowns when you're playing championship but like you go through some real real tough training sessions out there and, and you know I suppose a good question there from Jack a while ago about the 2018 uh, round robin like when you when you really go to the well over and over and over again in so many matches with the same lads and the same panel and thankfully we've been successful enough over the last number of years like it really it you're it really does drive it on and like when you win a game and then you go back to training on the tuesday night like it's just it's unreal like fellas are just bouncing in the gate like i can't wait to get out in the field and and get to work again you know so Definitely, I think we are extremely close unit. Um, there was 36 of us this year. I don't know how many will be there next year, but I think like the, a great thing is that everybody everybody does get on with everybody. Is it is it say everybody's best friends with everybody? Obviously not, because that's just not that's just not uh, that's not realistic. But I genuinely do think that everybody has good time for each other, and as you can see, that is a huge factor in in, in what we've been doing over the last number of years. But that comes from hard work as well. That comes from all the hard work that you do and train together, you know, and putting your, putting your body on the line number of nights every week and everybody turning up to train and giving their all and you just have I just have so much respect for all the other lads inside the training that you know at times there you'd be absolutely wrecked in training and you don't know can you go on and you just see somebody you know everybody is struggling at different times and you just see somebody we we break from a trail we break from a drill get a bit of water and you'll be going back out and you'll be thinking oh my god I'm absolutely wrecked here like can I, I don't know can I do this drill and you'd see three or four lads just bounding out to their drill you know and you just think like you know okay you can't show any weakness here because the, but some of the those lads over there are flying you know so it's just respect everybody just respects each other because we work so hard in training together and it's just a great thing Cheers, go Garrod there, quick one for me, Daniel from Pundit Arena. Um, I don't know if you've been keeping up much with the Joe McDonough, obviously Antrim won it, and down low, Cusick was a bit, I thought, passive, uh, aggressive in his comments in the Sunday game, saying they'll go straight back down. Firstly, do you think um, there should be more counties, like, for example, six counties in Munster? Uh, and what do you think of comments like that in terms of, like, because obviously Hurley needs to try and get more counties involved than Liam McCarthy? Yeah, definitely. I didn't I didn't, uh, I didn't, didn't realise that was said, but um, I suppose the more, again... Going back to the round robin, the more exposure for the more exposure for more counties, the better Hurlan is. Like I don't think Hurlan has ever been in a better state than it is at the moment, and I think that's down to more games. It, the move, the move, the move away from um, Naco Championship. I know we went back to this year, but the move away from Naco Championship back to the round or to, to the round robin has ex, has given more and more exposure to the game of Hurlan. And I think the more exposure for the likes of Antrim, for the likes of Carlo and, and, and other counties that are in the John McDonough, the, the, the more the merrier Kerry, you know, Offaly. Like I actually met, I was over and I was on a J1 in San Francisco a couple of years ago and Neil McManus was over there and he was playing with the, I was with Nate Podrick and he was with the other team. I can't remember the other name of the other team. And I was actually marking him a couple of times. Like he's a phenomenal hurler, like an absolutely phenomenal hurler. So like those lads, as I said about the Limerick footballers a couple of, uh, a while ago and in their own training, like those as train just as hard as we do, you know. So they deserve the exposure. If they're if they're entitled to the exposure, they deserve it as well. So I, I believe that the, the more games, the merrier, you know. So the teams like that can can progress. Absolutely. And last one for me then. Um, you obviously mentioned you're taking a complete break. Um, firstly, would you still kind of go for the odd five k or something like that? And secondly, was there any competitiveness in the Limerick? You know, when five k's became the thing on social media and lockdown, were you guys uh, doing five k's? And if you were, who was the best? And who, what sort of times <laughs> are we talking about here? 
Uh, no, I, I, per- I haven't done anything myself personally. You know, I'd still go out for a walk there in the evening and stuff with the dog, but I haven't done any structure training. I always call it structure training. Like, if I feel like doing something, I might go out and walk the dog or I might go down to the field and poke around with my brother and there'd obviously be a bit of running in that, but I haven't done any structure training. I haven't gone out and actually actually timed myself doing anything or done any runs or anything like that. I haven't done anything because I said I'm taking a complete break. Uh, we didn't do any 5Ks in the sense of... We didn't time any 5Ks, but we did, like, we were still training away over the lockdown. Obviously, we had uh, a running program, too, that Mikey gave us, and uh, we did a couple of other tests. We didn't do any 5Ks. We did a couple with the club now, all right, and there was a good, there was a good bit of enjoyment there um, in the club, with the club, with St. Paz, St. Patrick's. We did a couple of 5Ks, all right, with the hurling, and the hurlers, kind of, and the footballers. The majority would be the same same team, but there'd be a few different lads on, on both panels, and uh, there was a good bit of competition there in that one, all right. Would you be would you be going for the under twenty then on the five k at least or what was the uh, um, at uh, To be honest, I actually I only did one or two. I I'd be there thereabouts. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. tough. It's yeah. tough. It's a different different kettle of fish altogether. You know, we'd have a lot of we'd have a lot of short uh, high intensity running. Five k is a different kettle of fish altogether. But yeah, I'd be in around that. I'd say.